What's happening, Fusion friends? Welcome to another episode. I've got a few worms laid out today. Was uh, making some do it mold uh, worms the other day and thought, you know what? I should talk about some of the things that I use these for that aren't necessarily what most people would pick it up for. What I mean by that is you look at some of these and you're thinking, oh yeah, drop shot, right? And drop shot's awesome. I'll be honest, I can think of about 700 other things to throw than the drop shot, but uh, a few of these different worms that I've got, how we can use these straight tail kind of drop shotty, except for that, that's the Cinco, these kind of worms in different ways if uh, you're not a huge drop shot angler. And if you are, well then just drop shot your little heart out. So the first tip is one that uh, I've shared before, but this is a little Chatterbait Mini Max, a straight tail worm like this, is awesome on the back of a chatterbait. Any sort of vibrating jig because, you know, a lot of people will tell you that paddle tails, you can't use them on here. They create, you know, too much commotion. They work against the chatterbait. Listen, I throw chatterbaits with paddle tails all the time. They work on something like the Stealth Blade or this little Mini Max, or if you just want, I mean, I use a fluke on jackhammer, you know, the regular chatterbait doesn't matter, but something like this, let's just pick one of these. I'm gonna take maybe three quarters of an inch off the front. If you've not seen these worms before, these are one of the do-it molds I made. These are the uh, ESXL Waveworm 3.8 inch, and it does work great. You know, similar to like the uh, the Berkeley, what is it, flatworm? Gosh, now I'm having a brain fart. I can't remember. But anyway, nice little flat-bellied worm, and you can see once you put it on here, you have a killer little chatterbait trailer because there's no motion back here with this trailer. It's working 100% with the chatterbait. So as it vibrates and goes back and forth, this tail's back here doing exactly what the chatterbait's doing. So like I said, I made all these plastics myself. I will leave my do it link below. Of course, uh, if you use that, it shows them that I sent you. I always appreciate that. Um, if you're picking up anything from over there to try making your own stuff, give it a go. It is a lot of fun, especially during the winter. Uh, it helps keep you sane. If you've not tried a straight tail worm, um, you know, a fluke, anything like that, specifically, like I'm saying, if you're making your own stuff here, one of these little worms on it works absolutely perfect as a chatterbait trailer. Number two, we're gonna go with another trailer, the same type, but don't be afraid to try this on jigs that you're just dragging on the bottom. So again, with this ES uh, XL little worm, it's got a flat bottom to it. So there's a bunch of different fun stuff you could do. You could pour some of these, cut off the tail like I've done here. That's how I made these. I poured chartreuse ones, cut off the tail, put the tail piece back in there and then shot my kind of June bug spinoff color. And that's how you make these. So you could do that, but the nice part about these is with the flat bottom, if you're dragging like say a little football jig, this is kind of a June bug dark uh, color that I made. I tear off just a bit of the front so it's nice and flat. You know what, let's be proper here. Take your weed guard and push it in. That's a little tip. I see a lot of people sometimes struggling to put their plastics on. If you've got a weed guard like this, just take the weed guard and pinch it down. Run your plastic up to where you think it's gonna need to go like that. Move your weed guard out of the way. Move this down on the hook. And to trim the bottom of that skirt a little bit, and that's what you're looking like. So like I said, with a football jig or any type of jig you're dragging on the bottom, this is already flat on there. It's gonna go right with it. It's not gonna have a ton of action to it. It's just gonna be a regular little uh, plastic back there. Especially with these, this is also the do-it mold uh, football jig head. I forget what it's called, but these tend to sit up like that, and that's just gonna have that little tail once the water's going with it. And these are floating plastics. So when you make the regular Plastisol, um, you know, I buy it from Do It, just the regular Plastisol stuff. I don't add any sinking additive. I don't add salt to it. So these plastics are gonna float. So you're dragging this on the bottom just like so. Leave it there and it's just doing a little tantalizing needle. So people think, uh, I feel, you know, most beginners, okay, if I'm gonna throw a jig, craw trailer always goes on or some type of beaver bait. There's a bunch of different things you can do to make, you know, your own different jigs and plastics. I always, take my weed garden V it out like that too. So if you're dragging it up against brush and stuff, it kind of protects it a little bit more. But um, another trailer option, putting that on like a little jig that you're dragging on the bottom. Okay, next up is one, uh, the reason I have this line out, I've got some braid here. This is the P-Line TCB braid. People ask um, what braid I use on my spinning rods. I like the bright yellow version of this. This is just some green, but 15 pound uh, or 10 pound is what I go with the main line. This is an eight carrier, so it's nice and smooth, but Normally I would always go with a leader on my spinning. I'm just using this to show you it stands up a little bit better filming. But to make this rig, I'm gonna put a bobber stop on first. I'm gonna go with a little wet lead weight next. Now you could use a um, like a split shot that you crimp on. I personally don't like those because it can kink the line, especially with fluorocarbon and break it. So I run just a little weight with two stops. Put your second bobber stop on to hold the weight in place. Get that hook tight on there and you've got the mojo rig or a split shot rig, you've often heard it called. It's really just like a little finesse Carolina rig. So I've got maybe just over a foot of line from my weight down to my hook. 
And I'm going to use a little finesse worm like this. This is the four and a half inch El Gasano worm from Do It that I made. And uh, funny enough, I didn't know El Gasano means the worm in Spanish. Take the point of the hook, just barely stick it in, and then pull your plastic straight down. You can just barely feel that hook there. And this is an awesome little finesse rig that, again, I feel like people have just kind of forgotten about. It was one that people were talking about there for a while, and then it kind of fell to the wayside, including myself. I haven't thrown this for a while. Um, but it's an awesome little rig if you're fishing just over the tops of shallow grass. You can drag it and bounce it on a hard bottom, and the, the big key to this is you've got this little weight. It's just a little finesse rig. As you're dragging this weight back here and, you know, dropping it and bouncing it, this is a buoyant plastic back here. Now, it's not going to float all the way up like that, but it's semi-buoyant, so it's kind of going to float like this, so it's doing its own thing. So as this weight drops, this is back here acting free all on its own. So like I said, kind of a little finesse Carolina rig. Awesome little rig if you've never tried it. And the reason I like these little worms like this that are skinny, like a trick worm or, you know, something like this, is these small hooks, once it penetrates through there, sitting like that in the fish's mouth when it pops through, you don't want, a, you know, a plastic on here that's real big and thick, even like this. I don't want to go with, like, a stick bait like this. You'd have to use a different type of hook, but a little finesse hook like this, you know, kind of like you'd use for, like, a little robo worm or whatever if you were <laughs> drop shotting. Something like that is a great little finesse option to throw in the ponds and such. If you've never tried it, give it a go. Okay, next, another fun little option for this El Gasano worm is to cut this very carefully down the middle with some scissors. Please be sure you use adult supervision. I'm going to go right up to light, right where the, like, the worm body part starts, kind of the hard, I don't know what this is, the smooth part of the worms that you always see on there. And you've got this. The old guys are going to know exactly what I'm talking about, these little V-twin trailer type deals. Uh, I threw these all the time on a spinnerbait. And to give it just a little slightly different look instead of an old spinnerbait, I'm going to run that hooked just right in front of where we cut. Get that up on there, not the straightest, trying to do that through the camera. And that gives us this. Not a big bulky profile. It's got the two kicky legs back here. This is a uh, first gen lures top spin. Y'all have seen me talk about these. I think these are just kind of a cool little addition. Um, instead of going like with a big spinner bait with huge blades or, you know, as a bank angler, if you're trying to throw a, an underspin, getting it caught in stuff, has the blade on top, but it's still kind of a small finesse little, uh, you know, swim jig slash spinner bait deal with a trailer like that on there. So as you're bringing this in, you know, this is twisting up here. These are kind of doing their own things, you know, wobbling and waving back here. And especially if you pop your bait, so as you're reeling it, just give your rod tips little pops. These are gonna kick and move and, you know, kind of spin back here. Just gives it a weird different look. So really just kind of mimicking those old school little uh, twin tail trailers. And you know what I think actually, the old regular, just original chatter baits used to come with like a little twin tail deal like this. I don't know, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they used to. Okay, next is a fun one that I use a ton. It's a weighted wacky rig. Now, specifically, if you look up the Inchi Wacky Rig, this is something that uh, kind of originated in Japan, uh, and it was a way for them to fish a weighted head like this. So instead of just a weightless, you know, wacky rig on something like this, you're fishing a weighted head which allows you to get this down quicker because it's got weight on it so you can cover a, a longer distance. You know, if I'm fishing three foot with this weightless, you know, that's going down slow. That's not a big deal, right? But if I'm going to go out into maybe 10 foot or something with something like this and try, uh, you know, the edge of a dock or something, it's going to take forever to get that down. So this added weight as it's going down helps you fish that deeper water a little bit better. And it's kind of like a power finesse. You know, you're not fishing it as slow. You're getting it down to the bottom. And that's the thing with the Inchy Wacky Rig is as you're fishing this, I'm constantly wobbling it and shaking it. When you put this in, it has to go 100% perpendicular to the bait. So I don't use any O-rings. Um, you, you can burn through plastics with it. That does kind of suck. But I want it to go 90 degrees. So I'm 100% perpendicular to the bait like this. And the kind of cool thing about this is there's a number of different baits that were like kind of made for this. There's the Optimum Baits, uh, like Twin Teaser. There's the Jackal Flick Shake, uh, Zoom Swamp Crawler people use. A bunch of different things. But if you put this little El Gasano worm on here, like I said, just a little four and a half inch. As this is falling down with the weight, it'll kind of swing and it kicks the, the worm in like a different direction. As opposed to just this shimmying down. This is kind of falling, and they say it's supposed to mimic like a, a, a worm or a night crawler kind of swirling in the water as it's going down. You know how they'll do like a bunch of weird movements when you throw them in? That's what this is supposed to mimic. Now, I think it's just a cool little finesse way to change up your wacky rig look. Um, and as you're fishing this, the, you know, the technical way they fish this is once it gets to the bottom, you're keeping bottom contact and you're shaking this. 
So it's really doing this once it gets on the bottom and doing all these weird kind of shaky looking stuff to look like something living. I'm just reeling up my slack, shaking it, keeping it kind of on slack line, reel it up and so on. So if you've never tried that fishing this on the bottom, um, it's a fun way to do it. And remember, this is an open hook. So it's not like where I'm throwing this out and dead sticking it and letting it just sit there where it can get snagged, um, dragging this along. Now, the cool part of making your own stuff, so you know, I made my own plastics with that mold. Unfortunately, there's not a way to pour tungsten yet because it takes so much more heat to melt that down. So I just buy these, these are, where's my package? Right here, this is the Vike Tungsten Wacky Jig Head and I like the ones that come down to this little V point because your plastic tends to sit right there as opposed to the ones that are 100% round. But the cool part of making your own stuff is these, uh, these Vike Tungsten ones have like a little space here at the head. So I've been tinkering with something like this. I had uh, caught a couple on it last year, nothing special yet. I can't, uh, can't, can't patent this yet, but just some tiny little threads of uh, some purple rubber here and a little bit of flash. I've probably got too much of this. I need to cut some of that off, but this is just one of the prototypes. And in the water, you know, as this is going down, it's all kind of fluttering back here with the worm on it. Oh, allow me to show you. You've got the hairy stuff here. You've got the worm shaking. You know, it kind of gives it that real finesse jig, just a kind of different look. And when you stop this in the water, this hair and stuff, actually, that one needs to be cut shorter. There we go. I already like that better. So this is kind of doing its, you know, spider cut here. These legs are moving. So I don't know. That's the fun part of tinkering with tackle is who know you might make something that really works that you don't really see. I've never seen anything like this. Now probably somebody's going to copy it and make millions off of it and not even pay old Debo. But anyway, that's the fun part of making your own tackles. You can do fun, different, strange things. Uh, maybe it'll work. Maybe it won't, but you don't know unless you try it. All right, and the sixth and final way to use these flatworms, just a little bit different. Again, going back to this uh, ES XL wave, you know, flatworm type looking thing, is to put it just on a jig head. Now, if we put this on here and give you a look, I'm going to mark where I need to go with it to make it straight. I always just take my hook point where it's going to go and break the plastic there a little bit. Run my hook in there, try to keep it as straight as I can. Now, listen, I am not perfect at this, and it's okay if it's not. 100% straight, but pretty close, like that. And this will kind of mimic uh, like a Demiki rig. Now, I don't Demiki rig, obviously, from the bank. You know, it's more of like a vertical jigging thing from the boat. But throwing something like this, just a little finesse head, instead of having a paddle tail on here, as you reel this in, you can reel it in just straight, and it's doing nothing right. But as you kind of pop your rod, almost like you're doing the uh, like the swim jig shake as you're popping your rod as you're reeling it in, Doing something like that on here gives it just a cool different look because if you look at any like little small, you know, those like little glass minnows, those, you know, little long minnows that you see up against the shore, they're not swimming like this with a big paddle tail. They're kind of darting, right? Uh, you know, kind of in weird erratic movements, you know, with the body like that. So I think that's what this mimics. I used to throw one of these a lot. Now, not one of these um, type of deals because I didn't have these that I was making by my own but just a little tiny straight worm like that and you can catch bluegill you know green sunfish crappie bass a whole bunch of anything on this so it's a versatile little rig um, just a little bit different more of a finesse look to it you could use really either one of these you could take this uh, the El Gasano and kind of bite it off there and give a little finessey look you could throw one of these on an underspin again gives a cool finesse look a lot of guys will do that with a um, with a fluke so instead of having the paddle tail kicking back there it's just a real finesse straight you know kind of tail looking deal to it with just a little bit of flash under it so again if you've not tried those uh, give it a go all right fishing friends comment below and let me know which one of these you like the most maybe like a spinner bait chatter bait trailer Maybe you're into making your own tackle and you want to try making something funky and different. Heck, maybe you don't even care about all the special rigs. You just want to make your own plastics to have them and tinker with the colors. Like I said, you can do fun stuff like this and do, you know, chartreuse dips. You can do whites, blue, you know, whatever color you want. That's the fun part of making your own tackle. So comment below and let me know which one of these you would use. And today's subscribe fish and friend is Neil Gwen. He just commented on a different do it video I made making some Ned rigs. So that looks like so much fun, I'm gonna have to try it. I could do this all winter. Thanks, Debo. And that's exactly what it comes to, like for making tackle is, you know, I don't think I'm gonna make some crazy special thing that's gonna catch all the fish, right? You know, you could use a robo worm, you could use a number of different things, but it's the fun of creating your own color, you know, something that you want exactly and catching a fish on it, something that you made. 
it's just a cool different experience it's like man that actually worked uh, maybe i know what i'm doing here so if you haven't tried making your own stuff like i said i will link this all below check out the worms uh check out you know the jig stuff they've got a whole bunch of stuff too you know these are some of the little football jigs i made they've got round ball heads they've got little round you know swim bait heads like this if you're just looking to do some finesse you know paddle tails or something like this they got a ton of stuff over there check it out but listen it is late i need to edit uh all these goodies need to get cleaned up so as always thank you very much for watching and until next time Thank you.